What's up, loves? It's Princey215, and I'm coming to you today with a quick little message, real quick, as you can see from my title. First and foremost, God is good. He is good all the time. And I'm going to just jump right into my video because I try to make my videos a little quicker now. So, as some of you guys know, I did just graduate two months ago. I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that God put that in my path. I'm so grateful that God opened doors for me to succeed. And five years ago when I came to school, you guys, in 2017, I didn't know how I was going to be able to do it. Like, um, a family member basically helped me get into school by writing my papers. I mean, doing the, um, the application. But it wasn't just, like, her who helped me, like, my social worker helped, like so many people around me had to gather up information to get to the school, for them to accept me, you know, all that stuff. So I appreciate everybody five years ago who who helped push me get in. And, and again, it was all God. God put it in the hearts of people to help me, even though sometimes it's not genuine. When people do stuff for you, it's, you know, you can tell if it's genuine by how they, what the things they say to you. If someone says to you, oh, I changed your whole life, that wasn't genuine because you did not change my whole life. God changed my whole life. For five years of me being in school, I was homeless. I didn't have any parents. My phone bill, every month I had to pay. All together, $800 a year, $4,000 and something dollars out of five years all together just on a phone bill. Not including my hair care products, clothes, my books, my shoes. I needed a car for my internship car was a requirement for internship for the program that I was in. So I had to hustle. I said, all right, bet. God got me. I'm a hustle. So I owe all of, of the praise and the glory to God. And the one who helped me have a house, who helped me have a home. The woman in my program is the one who gave me housing. That was my main concern. Getting me into school, that was cool. But how was I supposed to stay if I had nowhere where to live? So I was in a homeless program because I was I was classified as homeless. I had nowhere to go. Like I said, I had no parents. I've been on my own. Before I came to college, I had my own apartment for two years. However, I was so young that it was it was a struggle for me to keep my apartment. I didn't have a career. I was jumping from job to job to job. I was just trying to make it. Every day I was just in survival mode. So with that being said, um, yeah, now that I'm out of college now and now that I am 27 now, so I spent five years in college, and now I can say at this age, this is a good age for someone to get out in the world. You know, not all of us have parents, have a loving family who will take you in with open arms and, you know, make sure you're okay. A lot of us are on our own and dealing with trauma. So, you know, sometimes we don't have parents because they could have passed away. Like, but my parents were abusive to me. So with that being said, I had to I had to fight. I had to fight for this. And now that I'm out here, you guys, the transition, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing for my title, but basically the transition from being in the dorms for five years and I never left, again, I never left. When holidays come, I would stay right in the dorm because where was I gonna go? When all my friends or my, my peers are packing up to go home for winter break, spring break, summer break i was i was hustling some every summer every winter i took a class because again my program let me stay in my dorm the whole time i was in school that was nothing but god nobody gets that that praise and that that honor but god but now transitioning them to to adult life we're in a matrix and they just want to take our time this matrix doesn't want you to do and be one with yourself. Working, we're like, come on. Like, let's just be real here. I ain't complaining because like I said, I'm highly blessed. But when you're spiritually awakening and you want to be one with God, working a nine to five job is not it. It ain't it. It's not it where you got to go work for someone else for eight hours a day. It ain't it. Me personally, my health is always going to come first. And my well-being will always come first. I will always make sure I, I eat. It's people who work, who are, are are workaholics and don't even eat. I'm never doing that. I care about my soul. I care about my spirit too much to let some nine to five job dictate if I don't make enough calories for the day. If I don't go take a walk and get some exercise. That's important. That's your health. 
this matrix is designed to to basically end you early that's what this matrix is designed to do but you have to be strong and fight against that you guys no matter what no matter what the odds are against you you can do it i mean i'm a i'm a walking testimony you guys i swear on everything i love i've been through so much abuse in my life i was abused for 10 years from the time i was three until i was 13 years old i dealt with nothing but physical abuse sexual abuse verbal abuse from the time i was three as early as I can remember, that's what I had to deal with. So, yeah, growing up, I had some PTSD, some depression, some anxiety. I even wound up developing OCD. But guess what? I'm here to talk about it. And God is my God is my strength. God is my everything. Do you think I'm going to live the rest of my life working a nine-to-five job for somebody else after I went through the most hardest thing that a child can ever go through and I overcame it? Do you think I'm really going to be a slave to someone else? No. No. College was fun because I didn't have rent. I only had to focus on class. And only thing I had to work, only thing I had to do was work and pay my car and get my own food and clothes. But I didn't have to worry about rent. And the only thing I had to do was have a deadline for my papers and my projects and meeting up with my groups and things like that. However, now that I'm out in this world, you guys, I see what this, I see what the the higher ups are trying to do to people who don't, who's trying to make it. When you're trying to make it, they're gonna try and keep you down. When you born into money, money, money is the root. No, money is I take that back. Money is not evil. It depends on who has it. But in this world, we need money to survive. We need money to just go wash our ass, to just go hop in the shower real quick. You gotta go spend that ten dollars on some soap, whatever type of soap you use. I'm bougie. I use Dr. Bronner's now. Like, that's just period. But yeah, like, with that being said, you guys, we're in a matrix. And if you're spiritually awakened and you believe in God, follow God. Don't listen to nobody. Don't let nobody try and scare you or tell you what you got to do. God going to provide for you always. I put myself first. My faith, my God, and I come first before any job. That's a job. What I want to do to produce in this world to help people, that's what I will put my all into because this is my story. Your life is your story. I have a story to tell and I'm going to share my story because I made it. I made it and I ain't done. I'm going to always have to knock down another double and I'm cool with that because as long as God rocking with me, baby, I'm good, y'all. And y'all got to understand that life, life is what you make it. And again, like I said, the transition from college to adulthood now, I see stuff clearer. I see what this world trying to do. And you got to be strong. I won't let this world tear me down. I had I had my parents. If my parents couldn't break me, do you really think that this world can break me? Your parents is your first love. Your parents are supposed to nurture you. Your parents are supposed to protect you. They're supposed to cultivate you. They're supposed to help you become your higher self. They're supposed to put you in all the different activities, all the different sports, let you explore, help you, draw with you, write with you. It's so deep. Parenting and, and a child can't do nothing besides what you can teach it. And if my first loves, the people who, who I thought would have my back for the rest of my life, if they couldn't break me and they tried to, this world could not break me. I'm too strong. I'm God's child. I wore my armor of God on me. I'm an angel of war. I graduated. I did a five-year program, two degrees, 4.0 GPA. Like, that's glory to God. God did that for me. I don't owe not one single person nothing besides the people who kept a roof over my head, who helped me with my clothes, my food, my car payments. One time, the lady in my program paid a whole six months of my car insurance. I'm like, really? That's God. Only God do that. My family ain't do that. My family ain't send me a care package. They did nothing for me. They didn't say, let me pay your phone bill consistently. Like I said, $800 every year for a phone bill, 4000 out of five years all together just on a phone bill. My family ain't do that, you guys. I'm a soldier, and y'all soldiers too. So you got to stay strong. Continue on your spiritual walk. Don't let nobody tell you how to be. You live your life the way you want to live your life, and that's no cap. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm 27 years old. I'm just getting my feet wet. Now, let's go. Let's go. I got something, I got something to say. I got a lot to say. Because God is my strength and God got me. God walks with me. Like that song, Jesus Walks With Me, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, my higher being, my my divine, my divine source, my, my, my divine energy source, 
the, my soul, my spirit, my creator is with me. My creator who knew how it would be. My creator knew I would dye my hair. I've been dyeing my hair. Not, not like that. This is my first time dyeing my hair in five years, though. Let's just be clear. I did a big chop. All right, this video getting too long. So, yeah, if y'all like what I said, drop some comments, like, subscribe. Drop some comments. Let me know what y'all want, want to hear next. Because, like I said, I done dealt with the abuse, the trauma. Still graduated two degrees, 4.0 GPA. You feel me? Like, it can be done. But you got to believe. I believed in myself. Like I said, I ain't had no parents rooting me on. My my step, my dad, who I consider my dad, but all my life, everybody's like, he's not your dad. He's not your dad. It don't matter. That's still my dad. My spiritual father is the one who I know was like, yeah, my baby good. My baby got it. But again, we wasn't, we didn't really talk that much, but I know his love was for me, for, was genuine. Other than that, wasn't nobody there for me. Like, come on, you. if anything, everybody want to use me. Let's go to the bar. Let's do this. Let's do that. Not helping me grow. You tell people I love God, they look at you like you stupid. They make jokes about you. John 3, 4, thou shalt not touch my leg. People said that to me before just because I'm very into my into my God and I'm not just into anybody touching me. You can't touch me, pops. <laughs> Y'all stay blessed though, all right? Deuces.